This week, I got a rare inside look at APAC, the American Israel Public Affairs Committee. It's one of the most powerful lobbying groups in the U.S. and one that impacts our elected officials' decisions on foreign policy in the Middle East and even where our tax dollars go. I attended their annual conference, which drew 18,000 supporters and every major presidential candidate except for Bernie Sanders. I got to hear pro-Israel messaging that was so strong, facts didn't even seem to matter. What do you say about that? We don't consider it occupation. The glimpse I got of the APAC machine in action was as fascinating as it was frightening. Here's why. First, the pandering of our presidential candidates was so intense, you'd think they were running for office in Israel. America can't ever be neutral when it comes to Israel's security or survival. America will stand unapologetically with the nation of Israel. I'm a newcomer to politics, but not to backing the Jewish state. Even though he previously said he would be neutral on the question of Israel and Palestine, Trump totally flipped the script at AIPAC and basically regurgitated their talking points. And he even prepared a speech for once. When I become president, the days of treating Israel like a second-class citizen will end on day one. Nothing quite got standing ovations at APAC like slamming the Iran deal. This is a deal that APAC lobbied hard against and spent millions trying to defeat, yet failed. When questioned outside the conference, APAC supporters said things like this. At the end of the day, the deal did pass. But inside, it was a different story. On the first day in office, I will rip this catastrophic Iranian nuclear deal to shreds. Another popular way to rally the crowd was by dehumanizing Palestinians and blaming them for the absence of peace. Palestinian children are raised in a culture that glorifies martyrdom and the willingness to die in the pursuit of killing or maiming Israelis. What I didn't hear was basic context, like the fact that Israel has kept more than 4 million Palestinians under a military occupation for decades, or that Israel continues expanding settlements on Palestinian land in violation of international law and long-standing U.S. policy. Those realities weren't criticized as major impediments to peace at all. Attendees kept saying they supported peace between Israelis and Palestinians, but strangely weren't really ready to talk about Israel's actions in the region. Lastly, APAC's three-day conference ended with a massive lobbying effort. Literally hundreds of Americans were bused to Capitol Hill to urge their elected officials to keep supporting Israel. Our purpose is to talk about Israel. Nothing specific to your communities there. Even high schoolers were assigned APAC talking points. APAC had like its three goals. So personally, I'm talking on the first topic, which is about um, a, like Iranian, Iranian, Iranian um, aggressions. APAC's message to U.S. politicians is simple. Support Israel and we'll support you. And like other strong lobbies, they're effective. The U.S. gives Israel more than $3 billion of military aid each year, which Israel uses to advance its interests, even when they contradict our own. But seeing the lobby in action firsthand left me asking, is this how American democracy should work?